Welcome back, NFL fans. Week number four, spread picks. We finally had a good week last week. We went 10-4-1, so that's all good. Survivor's still alive. I took the Bengals against the Jets. It was a pretty stress-free game. The Bengals handled business, so we're 3-0 in Survivor so far. I don't know how long it's going to go, but hey, I feel like some people, well, not some, I feel like a lot of people have been out by now, so we're going strong here. So anyway, leave your picks in the comments. I will put the timestamps for each game in the description as usual. Hope you guys enjoy, and let's get into it. Game number one will be the Minnesota Vikings at the New Orleans Saints, a 9.30 a.m. Eastern game. So if you're not a morning person like myself, you don't like these, but yes, it's a London game. There is no Jameis Winston for the Saints. There is no Michael Thomas for the Saints. I believe Marcus May is out. Um, I'm going to take the Vikings. Minnesota's a minus three on the road, in quotes. Not really on the road, of course. Now, Minnesota's been a bit shaky the past couple weeks. Of course, they had the blowout loss to the Eagles on Monday night, Kirk Cousins' primetime. Last week, they were down 14-0 and 24-14 to the Lions. They had the late touchdown to KJ Asborn. They got the win. But Minnesota, they should be playing at a higher level. Justin Jefferson's had a quiet two games in a row. You would figure that's going to change. For the Saints, you have Andy Dalton, the quarterback now, who is not like the worst quarterback in the world, of course, but he is older now, and we haven't seen him play since last year. And the Saints offense just has not looked good. I mean, they got nothing going versus Carolina last week until the fourth quarter. A couple missed field goals, so I have legitimate concerns about this Saints offense, especially with Michael Thomas out. Kamara is back from the rib injury. He did not look that great last week. Jarvis Landry's questionable. It's really just Chris Olave is the only healthy weapon on this team right now, and Andy Dalton's the quarterback. So with that said, I'm going to take Minnesota. I don't feel great about it, but Minnesota's healthier. I think they're the better team. It's a neutral site, basically, so I'll take the Vikings minus three. Next, we have the Cleveland Browns at the Atlanta Falcons. The Browns are favorites by one point on the road. I think it's a fair spread, honestly, but I am kind of in on the Falcons. I've told you guys this. I don't think they're as bad as the public perception makes them out to be. Cleveland's coming off extra rest, having played last Thursday. I, I do like that about them, but I'm going to take the Falcons plus one here at home. Their run defense has been fine, and the way the Browns really kill you is when Nick Chubb has 140 yards and three touchdowns. I just don't know if he's going to do that against this Falcons defense that maybe has overperformed so far, but maybe there's actually a kind of a good defense that we did not really look at coming into the year. And I think Atlanta's offense is fine. They know how to move the ball with Mariota's legs. They can throw it to Pitts. Drake London's had a good rookie season so far, really good rookie season. I know Cordero Patterson just showed up on the injury report. Got to watch out for that. Without Cordero, it's going to be tougher, but I think even without him, the Falcons could still win this game. This just seems like a game where any casual fan would just be like, oh, the Browns are much better. Let's take Cleveland. But no, I, I think the Falcons will give them a good fight. Um, I love young way Koo. He might make some, you know, 50 something yard field goals throughout this game and give the uh, Falcons an edge. So I'll take Atlanta plus one here. Next, we have the Washington Commanders at the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys riding this modest two game winning streak. And Washington has not looked great since week one. Carson Wentz was sacked eight, nine, I think it's nine, nine times last week. It was rough. And they will fix that to a degree. I don't see Carson Wentz getting sacked 10 times this week or even like seven times or more. But they can't correct all of that in a week. I think Wentz has to get rid of the ball faster. That should be a part of their game plan. But I just don't trust the Washington offense right now. I know Philly's a different animal. They're playing at such a high level. But even Dallas's offense is starting to figure things out. They have a really good balanced approach right now. Like Cooper Rush is not going to make any plays that really wow you. But he's running the offense at a pretty efficient level. Making the throws he has to make. There was even a throw last week on Monday night versus the Giants. Where he threw a great deep ball right in the you know, bread basket for CeeDee Lamb, and he dropped what would have been like a 60-yard gain. So Cooper Rush has looked fine so far. He's going to be the starter for one more week. Michael Gallup should be back for this game. And the Commander's secondary got smoked last week. I have no confidence in them right now. So I'll take Dallas minus three at home here. Next, the Seattle Seahawks are at the Detroit Lions, and the Lions are favorites by three and a half points at home. 
I'm going to take the Seattle Seahawks, which I hate doing because you guys know I've kind of trashed the Seahawks the past couple weeks. I don't think they're that good, but I look at the Lions injury report and they're missing some key guys. I mean, of course, they're missing DeAndre Swift. They're going to be without Amon Ross St. Brown has been one of the best receivers so far. They're without their starting guard, Jonah Jackson. There's a couple other starters out as well. This Lions team is pretty injured right now and their defense is not something I fear especially their run defense this just feels like one of those games where the Seahawks will give Rashad Penny 18 carries he'll get 131 yards and like a touchdown and they'll command the ground game and Geno Smith the last couple weeks has like not done that bad of a job he is putting the ball in his playmakers hands we've seen Tyler Lockett with back-to-back very solid weeks last week that an emphasis I'm giving DK Metcalf, the ball, he had that awesome touchdown catch, had a pretty good game overall. I know Jeffrey Okuda is playing very well. He might lock up one of those guys, but I feel like the other guy will go off. Plus, the running back for the Seahawks will probably go off in this game. And I think I did see that the Lions are without their kicker, Austin Seibert, whatever his name is. But yeah, they're without him, I believe. So that's also going to be tough to deal with. I don't love Seattle. I can never love them this year because I don't think they're that good once again. But this just feels like the perfect spot for them. The Lions have the injuries against them. So I will take take Seattle plus three and a half on the road. Next, we have the Tennessee Titans at the Indianapolis Colts. Of course, a big game for AFC South implications. I believe the last five or six times these teams have met, the Titans have had a very good record against them. I think the Titans might be like four and one in their past five or even five and one in their past six, whatever it is. The Titans have had much success against this Colts team. The Colts do change every year. They've had a new quarterback every year since Andrew Luck left. And Tennessee is a plus three and a half. So I'm going to take the Titans. Of course, it could be a three-point Colts win, but hey, I still cover. I'm going to win. I would like to believe that the Titans figured out something last week. They put up a lot of points in the first half versus the Raiders. I know the Raiders defense is not good, but hopefully they figured something out. Robert Woods played well. Traylon Burks eventually will have a big game. I keep saying that, but it will happen. And while the Colts run defense, defense has been pretty good this year there are they're not getting much pass rush so I think this could be a game where you run the Ryan Tannehill play actions and he just finds the guys on the deep crossers whether it's Traylon or whether it's Robert Woods or whoever he'll find somebody they'll have big plays offensively and the Titans on the other hand are still generating a good pass rush and we know Matt Ryan has had games this year where he's been sacked multiple times and we saw it versus the Jaguars. We saw it week one versus uh, Houston. So I'm not completely trusting this Colts team yet. It was a great win last week, but you know Travis Kelsey dropped a couple touchdowns, and they had that ridiculous Chris Jones taunting call that extended that last drive. I don't know. I don't want to say the Colts got lucky, but they kind of did. So I will take the Titans plus three and a half. Next, the Chicago Bears are at my New York Giants here. Um, My gut's telling me Chicago, but I can't do it. I'm going to go with the Giants here as a minus three at home. This is a game if if the Giants really want to be taken seriously this year, which I know is not the goal, but they they should win this game. You're the home team. These rosters are pretty similar. The Bears don't know how to pass the ball right now. not saying the Giants really know how to either because of their offensive line and Daniel Jones not taking some deep shots here and there. But the Bears are without their cornerback one, Jalen Johnson. I just think the Giants offense should hopefully get something going here. The Giants have the big advantage in the kicker department. Cairo Santos has not practiced this week, and Graham Gano has been great for the Giants, so it could be one of those games that comes down to field goals, and the Giants definitely hold the advantage there. Saquon Barkley should have a good day versus this Bears run defense. I know the Giants run defense is not very good either, but they're without David Montgomery, the Bears, so we'll see if Khalil Herbert can fill in those shoes. I wouldn't doubt it, but I just think the Giants have the advantage, and hopefully they can get it done. I know the Giants' defense is concerning right now, but it's not like the Bears' offense is that great. So the Giants, I think, should win this game. I will take them as a minus three. Next, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Philadelphia Eagles. Honestly, a pretty interesting game here. Not only do you have two teams that are very hot right now and playing at a high level, of course, Philly is undefeated. I think they're the last team left undefeated, but they have looked unstoppable this year. But you also have Doug Peterson, the former Eagles head coach, Super Bowl coach for them, going back to coach in Philadelphia, but of course, being the coach of the Jaguars. That's interesting. You have the Trevor Lawrence. Has he finally turned the corner? I think he has. And as I said, coming into last week, I'm starting to take Jacksonville seriously. That's why I took them last week versus the Chargers. I did not expect them to win 38-10. 10 or whatever, but I think this Jaguars team is too good right now to be 
disrespected like this. I don't think Philly right now is that much better than Jacksonville to be almost a touchdown favorite. I, I know Philly has been looking great and whatever, but this Jaguars team is clicking right now. Their offense is clicking. I think their defense looks pretty good. This just feels like it's going to be a, a closely contested game, and I would not be shocked if the Jaguars pull off the victory. So I'm not saying it will happen, but I think the most likely outcome is Philly wins this game by three or four points. So with that being said, I'll take the Jacksonville Jaguars plus six and a half. Next, we have the New York Jets at the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers only favorites by three and a half points. Of course, Zach Wilson should be making his season debut unless, you know, something unforeseen happens. But I do want to pick the Jets, but I can't do it. Just logically speaking, I, I'm excited for the Jets and Zach Wilson, him having the new weapons of, uh, you know, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, even Tyler Conklin, uh, Brees Hall. I'm excited for that, you know, if you're a Jets fan. But I think Pittsburgh right now, I mean, they are a team, of course, that is coming off another mini buy extended rest having played last Thursday. And I just don't see Mike Tomlin on 10 days of rest losing to the Jets. I, I just can't see it. And maybe they win by three in the Jets cover. I could see that scenario. I could also see a scenario where I know without TJ Watt, it's not as easy. But I could see a scenario where Pittsburgh is all over Zach Wilson because the Jets have so many offensive line injuries. They lost George Fant, Dwayne Brown, Mekhi Becton. All their tackles are gone. So I think Pittsburgh will play good defense in this game. It's Zach Wilson's first time playing in an actual game since like the first drive in the first preseason game. So I'm not expecting that much right away. I think eventually the Jets offense will be fine, just not this week in Pittsburgh. So I'll take the Steelers minus three and a half. Next, the Buffalo Bills at the Baltimore Ravens, a pretty highly anticipated game of uh, some of the best offenses in football right now. Definitely two of the top five offenses on one. I don't know if they're top three, but top five for sure. So this should be one of the higher scoring games of the week. And I'm going to take Buffalo minus three here on the road. I like the fact that Buffalo is coming off that tough loss in Miami, a division game where you saw how, you know, the offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, reacted by throwing all his papers and going ballistic in the booth and, you know, some of the, the Bills players slamming their helmets. It was a rough loss for them, and I think they will... I don't want to say take the regular season more seriously, but sometimes when you're winning by that much and the Bills were just destroying people, they beat the Rams by two or three touchdowns opening night. The Titans game was over at halftime in week two. They looked like they were by far the best team in the NFL. And I think last week might have been a bit of a reality check. And I just think they'll come out more sharp this time. The Bills looked great the first quarter of last week. And, you know, they got off to a 7 0 lead. And then Josh Allen fumbled. The whole game changed. This is a Baltimore defense, and especially their secondary, that stinks. And they are injured. Both teams are injured. But. I just think Josh Allen could have a day, like a 400-yard, three-touchdown type day. Not saying Lamar Jackson can't do the same thing going on the other side, but I just think the Bills are a better team than the Ravens overall. The Bills are coming off a loss, and I'll take Buffalo minus three on the road. Next, we have the Los Angeles Chargers at the Houston Texans. This is a game, well, I should say the spread first. The Texans are five-and-a-half-point underdogs in this game, and as I was going to say, this was a game last year that late in the season, the Chargers lost to the Texans, who were like a four-win team, maybe a three-win team last year. It was a bad loss, and of course, the Chargers missed the playoffs ever so slightly, so this was like a, a game that they really had to win last year. They lost it, so Houston beat these guys last year when they were even more healthy. Now you have a Chargers team that has a banged-up Justin Herbert. They have a run game that still has not figured it out yet. I mean, Austin Eckler, I think I think the Chargers are the only team in the NFL without a 15-plus yard rush this year. So that's pretty crazy, and I don't know if it'll get solved here, but it's a prime matchup versus a bad Houston Texans run defense, but we'll see. Keenan Allen's out for the Chargers. Joey Bosa's out for the Chargers. Rashawn Slater's out for the Chargers. Uh, maybe J.C. Jackson. I mean, we'll find out. There's a lot of injuries for this Chargers team right now. I, I know we look at the Chargers, we look at the Texans, and we're like, oh, the Chargers are much better. But when you look into the injuries and things like that, and the fact that Houston's still getting a pretty good pass rush this year, underrated pass rush, 
I think they can like hang on in this game. I'm not saying they'll win. I, I do think the Chargers win this game, and maybe they win by a lot. I don't know, but I just think that the Chargers are a bit too banged up right now. I think Houston can keep this close. We saw the Texans win this game back in December last year, the same matchup. So I will take Houston plus five and a half, but I would still expect the Chargers to win. Next is the Arizona Cardinals at the Carolina Panthers. Now we're starting the four o'clock slate. This is a tough game to pick, in my opinion. I mean, you look at the Panthers, they are a bad offense and a average to above average defense. You look at the Cardinals, they are an average to above average offense and a bad defense. So like, these teams are kind of similar so far. I think the Cardinals, when healthy, are a better roster. But of course, you're still without DeAndre Hopkins. The secondary is still coming back from injuries. We'll see. But Carolina is the home team. They're underdogs by a point. I just feel inclined to take Carolina here. I just think this Cardinals offense looks a bit broken still. I mean, they had four field goals last week, no touchdowns. And it's like Kyler Murray, I feel like, wants to take the deep shots, but they're just not giving it to them right now, which is why Hollywood Brown had like 14 catches and 120 yards last week. It was a very like, like when you think Marquise Brown, you're thinking like long touchdowns, but they can't even go deep in this offense right now. And as I said, this Panthers defense is not that bad, so... I would think they would keep the Cardinals offense in check. And on the other side, the Cardinals secondary has been atrocious this year. I know Baker Mayfield has not been good either, but I think if they give Baker some time because the Cardinals pass rush has not been good either, then hopefully the Panthers can figure it out offensively. DJ Moore is coming off a very down week. You would think he gets it going at some point. I know McCaffrey's questionable, but he should play. So I will take the Panthers plus one. But I will say this is like one of the toughest games to pick this week, so I'm kind of just guessing here. Next, we have the New England Patriots at the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are nine and a half point favorites. Not much of a surprise. We know Mac Jones is out for this game. I saw Lawrence Guy is out for this game. The Patriots are injured. They're not playing particularly well right now. And I just think the Packers are the play here. I know I know, 10 points is a lot. I get all that. But if the Packers really take this game seriously, which hopefully they do, I don't see why not, they should win this game by a lot. The Patriots defense has kind of been below average so far. So you know what? I don't respect them like I used to. You have 36-year-old Brian Hoyer at quarterback for the Patriots. You know, they didn't have Jacoby Myers last week, their best receiver. I know Devontae Parker had a big week last week, but that was against the Baltimore Ravens, who, as I mentioned, have an awful secondary, lots of injuries. And the Packers' defense is very good. We saw what they did last week to Brady. I know he was, he was without his top weapons and Evans and Godwin, but still... To hold Brady to like seven points for most of that game is impressive. I just don't think Brian Hoyer and the Patriots offense does much in this game. I guess the only way I could see the Patriots keeping this close is if they run the ball very efficiently. The Packers run defense has been a bit iffy at times this year. So I guess if Damian Harris or Mondre Stevenson have efficient games and maybe there's like a muffed punt or something like that, then sure, the Patriots can keep it close. But assuming the Packers play a relatively clean game, and once again, take this one seriously, they should win this game by 10 plus. I'll take the Packers minus nine and a half. Next, we have the Denver Broncos at the Las Vegas Raiders. And the Raiders are favorites by two and a half. The Raiders have not won a game yet this year. It's sink or swim time. A lot of desperation here. We know Josh McDaniel's record as a head coach has not been great since he got off to that great start with the Broncos, you know, 12 years ago, whatever that was. And I feel good about Denver. I'm taking Denver plus two and a half. I think they win this game outright. I don't think the Raiders defense is all that great. I think this is finally a spot where the Broncos offense and Russell Wilson actually puts on a good performance. Russell Wilson has multiple touchdown passes and the Raiders offensive line scares me. It's not that good. Denver can get pass rush. Of course, I do like the Raiders weapons with Adams and, and Waller and guys like that. Renfro's out once again, remind you. So it's Matt Collins as the wide receiver too. But this Raiders team is tough to trust. Same with the Broncos. Their head coach has been very questionable so far. But look, Russell Wilson's a Hall of Famer. I still like to think he's in the prime of his career. I think they will figure things out. And this is a good week to do it against a Raiders defense that's not very good. I think the Broncos win the game. I'll take them plus two and a half. Next, we have Sunday Night Football. Football. The Kansas City Chiefs are at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks are favored by a single point in this one. So I was going back and forth here, but I decided to go with the Chiefs. They seem like the healthier team right now. 
The Buccaneers have had problems running the ball this year. I know Tampa's defense is really good. I definitely fear them, but... I think with Mahomes and getting time to throw, he's been protecting the ball as well, which is a big thing. I think this Chiefs offense will be fine. It's my concern is about the Tom Brady-led Buccaneers offense right now. As I mentioned, they are one of the worst teams in, in running the ball yards per carry wise. Um, they still might be without Julio Jones and Chris Godwin. They do get Mike Evans back off the suspension. That will help, but that's one guy. I think this matchup's great though because you have two elite quarterbacks coming off losses when you have Mahomes off a loss Brady off a loss you will get them at their best it should be like peak football so I'm excited for that matchup but I just think the Chiefs are healthier right now this is the same place where they got their asses handed to them in the Super Bowl back in 2020 it was at Raymond James Field or Stadium whatever it's called in Tampa same matchup, and we know what happened there with the Chiefs. They had that very difficult uh, time moving the ball offensively, and, and Brady wins a Super Bowl his first year in Tampa. So I think they'll get their payback here. I think the Chiefs win this game. I will take them as a plus one. Final game Monday night, we have the LA Rams at the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners' defense looks special this year so far. I cannot deny that, and they're healthy. But the part of the ball that's not healthy for them is offensively. We saw the Trent Williams injury. He probably won't play in this game. And ever since Trent Williams went down, that Niners offense looked lost. They got George Kittle back, which is nice. Brandon Ayuk is looking better. But they've had a tougher time running the ball here recently since the Elijah Mitchell injury. I still trust this Rams offense. It's not as dominant as it was at points last year, but... For now, at least, I think they'll figure it out. I'm not expecting a high-scoring game, but I could see the Rams winning this one like 24-20, something along those lines. I just don't trust Jimmy G right now in this passing attack, especially with Trent Williams out. It's a big loss for them. So the Niners are favored by two. They are the home team. I completely get the respect going their way, but I just think the Rams are better right now, and especially offensively. So... We'll see what happens. Should be a fun game, but I will take the Rams as a plus two on the road. Now for Survivor. Once again, 3-0 so far this year. Hopefully that keeps going. I have used the Ravens, the Broncos, and the Bengals. My week four Survivor pick is going to be the Green Bay Packers at home versus the New England Patriots. Obviously in the past when it was Brady versus Rodgers, you would never take that chance, but now it's Brian Hoyer versus Rodgers. I would think the Packers should win this game, hopefully. So I know the NFL is unpredictable at times, but I feel pretty good about that one. So hopefully we will go four weeks in a row getting this dub. So it's Packers for me. Let me know uh, your Survivor picks in the comments. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys in week five.